my name is Michaela White. Um, I go to Muskegon Heights Academy. I'm in 10th grade. Since like seventh grade, like all I hear is like bad stuff about our school for some reason. I don't know why. It's just always negative. Cause it's from the outside looking in, like they think some of us like want to be like gang leaders or this or that. They don't realize that some of us actually have goals and dreams that we want to achieve by the time we get out of school. People say there is nothing good that can come out of Muskegon Heights. Oh man, I hope nobody ever tells that to me. It'd probably be a problem. But um, if I did hear it, I would just tell them to look around. When you talk about excellence, you can't talk about excellence in Muskegon County without including people from Muskegon Heights community. Darius Quinn worked for Kent County HR. Jeremy Wright worked for uh, the state of Michigan. The first black Supreme Court justice for the state of Arkansas. She graduated from Muskegon Heights in 1958. Philip Cummings worked for the second largest law firm in the country. Judge April Walker, which I, I graduated with her and attorney Philip Cummings. Shelley Baldwin worked for uh, CNN News. Uh, Judge Greg Pittman. Uh, Carl Russ was a professional football player. Dr. Pam Smith, Pastor Kai Guy. Uh, Dr. Dwayne Didi, who, who is a neurosurgeon down in Florida. Carla Laws, who was a principal here. Torres Daniels was a professional boxer. Anywhere you go in the world, you're going to find a Muskegon Heights graduate doing some great things. Yeah, I've been here since August 1968. So I've got a chance to see uh, many students, more than 5,000 of them, before I retired in uh, 2009. On that day, August 20th, 1968, I made the bus trip here, and I got on, on at the bus station down in downtown Muskegon and took a cab, and as I came through the heights and came, one thing that caught my eye, and it's, I have always thought about that, and that's always been my backdrop, is that that is the sign as you come into Muskegon Heights, which says, Welcome to Muskegon Heights, a city of friendly people. And over the years, I have found that, that to be really true. If you want to know about Muskegon Heights, you're going to have to know about Muskegon Heights as a friendly people, as a people of religion, as a people who work together to help our young people to grow, to figure out what they want to do in life, and help them all along the way so that they can reach, reach their dreams. And whether their dreams are going to be here in Muskegon or if they're going to go all across the world. Because that's one of the things that I notice you know, about being here, the caring of the citizens of Muskegon Heights for each other. And that is what made us, I think, a good city. And I've had 53 years to observe that and to be a part of it. And I'm happy to uh, be a part of that spirit, that emotion, that they feel that we call Tiger Pride. Because I was an English teacher. And I was always very proud when my students came up with a, a story or a poem or uh, an essay that uh, I felt uh, was worthy of sending off to, uh, to be judged or for someone else to enjoy. I am a member of the Peninsula Writers and we sponsor an anthology. I know one in particular, I can't remember her name right off hand of the effects of that stroke. I can't remember some things, but, but I had one student who, very proud of her, uh, she uh, wrote poems and stories. I submitted in her freshman year, her sophomore year, her junior year, and in her senior year. Okay, it got to the point where the, the, all <laughs> my colleagues knew the writing and appreciate, appreciate her writing. 
They enjoyed it and they said, well, we are going to have to get some type of award for her. They did up a certificate, a collection of stories that she had done, and we presented that to her at, uh, at the class night for her, for her graduating class. And so, oh, she was very happy about that, but not as happy, I don't think as happy as I was. I have had over the years uh, several people who have done stories, who have had stories published. I have had uh, some uh, students who have gone on to uh, become English teachers. And that's, that's a proud moment. Almost as proud as, you know, when I had my, had my daughter. I can think in, in terms of the uh, class of 1978, we, we've got April Walker, I know who is an attorney down in uh, Houston, I believe it's Houston, Dr. Burt, Orlando Burt, who was one of my students. He's doing great things and he quite, quite often comes back here and we get, get a chance to talk. You know, that's one thing about that, that Tiger Pride. You know, we are able to, even though we were teacher and student, now we are friends, we are comrades, and we're able to uh, sit back and talk and just, just understand, you know, what it, what it means to be a tiger and, and how, how that idea of the tiger is manifested in many ways, many, play, many jobs. See, I, Mr. Harris now you still on, on Beverly Street across, over across Sherman. I bought the house on Peck Street, 2037. We shared the upstairs apartment. Okay. He had the back bedroom, he had the front bedroom. Yeah. And we shared it, and that's how I got to know Mr. Harris over the years. And at the time, I'm volunteering up here as a hall monitor, because I worked second shift at the shop at the time. And uh, the kids, the basketball team, track team, didn't have no way to get there, so I volunteered to take them. Or the cheerleaders sometimes couldn't go. We would burn up cars. The state police knew Muskegon Heights was going to the game. <laughs> because they would have police cars and give us almost a police escort to Kalamazoo, Lansing, whatever. I can remember working at the Lesco Corporation, the old Sears Court skating ring. My boss, George Dillard, I would go in his office in September and circle March and April tournament times. I'm not gonna be here, I don't mm -hmm. care what you do. I had to do a sample run that Saturday morning at the shop. Heights is playing basketball in Lansing, Michigan State. I got there by the fourth quarter. I was at the, show, at the service station right here on Getty and, Sh and uh, Sherman, filling my tank when tip off of the game started. When I got to Lansing and sit down, they were just beginning the fourth quarter. <laughs> That's a good time. We would go to Kalamazoo. I never get the state police would be out there. Here come Heights. Zoom, 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 zoom. State police, go, go, go. They pulled over one car, five or six Heights cars, goes zoom right behind. Mm -hmm. uh, Detroit, going to, going, to, going to Lansing one time, Michigan State. In the escrow between here and Grand Rapids, I passed myself, the state police, doing 85, 90 miles an hour, and I put up my chicken heist tiger. That's how the support we had. Mm -hmm. It used to be huge. Fan buses, all that. And then when we got the buses, same thing. We, In mm -hmm. fact, uh, we went to Kalamazoo one time, and uh, they didn't have about 25, 30 seats for us. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we taking the gym. We took the whole set up to Fremont, I never forget we were free by one time, they had us pushed in the corner. Uh uh. Next thing you know, we had a whole side. Next time you see me in high school, they gave us a whole section. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the type of following the school had. We had a, another Mr. Sindor would go south. All the black college bring teachers up here. My so sister law had a reputation over there. King School, you could not make me sound so mad. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, and that just brought that village from that south, that southern hospitality, moved to Muskegon and Muskegon Heights. And we had those teachers who were like your second mom or your second dad because they cared about you because they weren't much older than you at that time. Our teachers probably were about 24, 25, and we were 17, 8, 16, 17, 18, being taught by our peers. Mm -hmm. And they instilled in us that, that college excellence because they had just left those HBCUs from down south. And so they brought that southern um, culture up here to Muskegon Hikes, and it really just made that village a whole here in the city. Oh, Mrs. Wright, <laughs> Ms. Mrs. Wright, Mrs. Moore, uh, Mrs. Joyce Harrison, Robinson, Joyce Robinson, Robinson Mrs. Newsome, Mrs. Causey, Mr. Turner, Mr. Turner, <laughs> Mrs. Turner, Mrs. Turner. Oh, those were all of our village. Yes. Mark Glover, Mr. Glover. The two board right now. 
Yes, but yes, she, yes. Not, she, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. she moved here in 19, what? Mama. Mama. Mm -hmm. 68, I mean, 16. Yep. Where did you move from? Magnolia, Arkansas. She Magnolia, Magnolia, Arkansas. University she was one of those. Of Arkansas, Pine Bluff. Yep, University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff. She was one of those teach one of those students who was recruited to come up here and, and teach. She lived in the. Uh, we used to have little, little hotels. Oh yeah, okay. the motel. So the basically, motel right there in the Gettysburg Street. Mm -hmm. okay. That's where she stayed the first two or three nights she was in town. Yep. So basically, what they did was they would have houses. Up, Miss Burton, Queen Burton. Mm -hmm. Had bought a house next door to her house and she had four bedrooms in that house mm -hmm. and she would lease each room for teachers who were moving up here from down south. That's mm -hmm. how huge this was for our community. It was community supporting community. Hey, I'm going to buy a house next door to mine to bring those students who want to teach here up and house them until they were able to make enough money working at the school system to buy their own. She and did. that's how our community grew. I don't want to get into a racial Ms. thing, Pulliams, but yeah. some of the white teachers that we had up here were just as good as some of the black oh, of teachers course. because they were dedicated to educate. That's all. Mm -hmm. Easy. Miss Navarre, Miss Navarre, mm -hmm. uh huh, Mr. Glover, Mr. Oh, we had Mr. so Martinez. many. Mr. Martinez. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But Old Muskegon Heights was just what we was talking about. You had Mr. Dyson, the gentleman downstairs with the football team, washing clean uniforms after the game. He didn't get paid. I'm a volunteer with the band parents. I didn't get paid. My boss would let me on Friday get off work with the company van and redo the concession stand and make sure everything's ready for that Friday night after the game. Well, when I was here, we had uh, Mr. Moore, the band director. I got a chance to meet him when he first came here. Mr. Moore came out of Southern University uh -huh. here in Muskegon Heights. FAMU. Hmm? He came out of FAMU. FAMU, uh, mm -hmm. mm, yep. right here. And he brought all that talent with him. If you ever see a band in the South, Jack State Fair, 40 and M, all kinds of schools, you know what I'm talking about. He brought that here. Next thing you know, this band, one of the students right here, was going all over the world, because we didn't go to Fruitport no more. We no, didn't go we to Spring to... Lake no more. We went to Circuit City Classic, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans Chicago, Detroit, mm -hmm. and I was telling you later a few minutes ago. Point. That's right, Mr. Watson, Dr. Watson now, was a football player, and they won it on the way to the state championship playoff all the way to Marquette, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Nobody going but for, he said, Mr. Thornton, would you please see if we'd band go? Reverend Greer, I think he's superintendent over at Westminster Christian, church bus mm -hmm. took us all the way up there, no charge. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was help buy the gas and ask for dollars and volunteers to help do that. Got there, the band marched off. Halftime show, that's right. Yeah, our band was huge. Mr. Moore brought that high step Ooh, in man, band yes. sound from FAMU all the way to Muskegon Hikes. And you tell me, and right now he's a Hall of Fame band coach, mm -hmm. and uh, he just left this past, just last year, moved back to Atlanta. And uh, Mr. Moore, uh, well, he did, uh, Mr. Yeah. Robinson, we right never now. thought he would retire. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. really. He put us on. He put us on the map. Mm -hmm. You go down to, uh, in Fifth Street Park, the parade, the ice hat. You didn't leave till you heard the song, I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. Bob Moore played it everywhere you go. I'm so glad I'm from Muskegon Heights. Do you know about the second line in New Orleans where um, how the bands and the parades would be marching down the middle of the street and you would have the second line of everybody following that band down on the sidewalks? Muskegon Heights had a second line That's wherever right. the band would go. That's right. Children all the, from little all the way to grown people would follow the band in every parade as that second line. I didn't go the first three years in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. That's my home, I'm about 100 miles away. But anyway, the last year I went, we had a sign made on the uh, chaperone van, Muskegon Heights. Somebody stole that sign off mm -hmm. and let us know, I got this sign because you made me homesick. Mm -hmm. Tiger pride to me, um, it means community. It, com it means loyalty. It means family. Home. Home and it's also Tiger Pride is where you can stick your chest out because you know around the world you got some educated people out there and don't let nobody fool you. They are doing a great job around the world. Mm -hmm. That's what it does for me. What does Tiger Pride mean to me? Um, I think my answer would probably be a little different. Most of the time you talk about Tiger Pride, it kind of relates to sports when it comes to Muskegon Heights High School. I think for me, when I got here, it was being able to see professionals in the building of the high school that looked how I looked. Just that pride of being able to see people that have careers in a community that you're growing up in just gave you the sense that anything was possible. 
and you can dream it. If you can dream it, you can achieve it. So I just love to uh, be a part of that legacy of being a person that came from this community and have followed my dream in, in my career. When I came here my freshman year, my um, brother Keith and Ron's wife were in the band. Um, I played the drums, but I had no idea about band or reading music. I just hopped in the band because I knew how to play the drums. So it took them about a year to figure out I didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> I, I can pick up the beats. So I would just listen and learn, remember it and learn it. But our band was pretty good. So we were going to state and uh, they put the music in front of me and I was, don't know what that is. <laughs> so Mr. Moore pulled me to the side and took some time and told me and show me what exactly what, what I was playing, so I was able to pick it up. So I think we got did good good numbers at state. So my high school time here was fantastic, great. We did a lot of things, so I loved it, every moment of it. Um, I, I played football and basketball here at Muskegon Heights. Um, my sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, all on varsity. Um, my Junior year was probably my best high school year ever. Uh, we made it to the semifinals in football that year. And if you know the history of, of football at Muskegon Heights, we had a lot of down years. So for us to kind of make it that far, that year the whole, it was like the old time movies. The whole city was shut down. Everybody would be at the games. The crowd would be going crazy. It was just an honor to be able to represent our community during that time. And then we left football and went right into basketball. And again, we made it to the finals that year. And we got an opportunity to play at the Palace of Auburn Hills in Detroit. And uh, again, it was an honor to be able to represent this community. And, and, and it was an honor to see so many of the community people follow us all over the state to each tournament game. Uh, it was, it's just exciting times. And, and, and that's one of the things you love about this community. Um, despite what other people think, the team that we had and some of the guys that was on that team, um, football-wise, you have uh, Kareem Watson, who is a doctor now, um, a, a Keith Guy, who was a point guard on the basketball team, who again is the athletic director at um, Muskegon Public Schools, um, CQ Moody, who played both sports. He's an administrator over in Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids Public Schools. Um, Fonte Love, who was on this football team. He's a lieutenant with the Muskegon Heights Fire Department. So it, it's funny how that, the group of guys that we had and the hard work that was instilled in us paid off way after basketball. So a lot of times when people say and talk about sports, I don't, they don't always realize how that can carry over to life skills. You know, being on time for practice, working hard when you get there. All those things are life skills that help you carry over and achieve goals that you have in your um, latter part of your life. What it means to have Tiger pride, that, that's a really deep question. Um, and the answer that I would have is the heart, the love to, of the community, the love of children. Um, we say we are a, the city of friendly people. So Tiger Pride follows what you do as a person. Um, it's a heart. I mean, it's a, you know, you, you hear that Tiger growl. Um, it's the passion that a person carries as they walk through the city. It's the passion that a person carries, you know, whether they're going from one state to the other. So no matter where you go, you meet another Tiger it's all love, it's all respect, it's happiness, it's joy. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can continue to go back and reteach Tiger Pride to our children. Let them know what it means to stand for something, um, to mean what they say, and for their name um, to carry weight, not only in their city, but in their lifestyle, where they go. Um, I, I, I'll always talk about Mr. and Miss Western. Mr. and Mrs. Western were, Mr. Western was the principal of Muskegon Heights High School. Ms. Western was, was our social, study, social studies teacher. They actually drove me to Michigan State University to attend college. Even as a freshman in high school, I started college through the National Science Foundation. That also matured me and made me 
the man that I am today. Um, because I remember the first day I was scared, I was nervous, didn't know what I was doing. All I knew, I packed my bags and went to campus. Um, upon arriving to campus, I didn't have the money. My parents didn't have the money. But Mr. and Ms. Western, they took me to campus, took me to the grocery store, filled up the refrigerator in the store, and they talked to me, let me know everything was gonna be okay, and then they left. A month later, they came back on campus and brought more food. And they and left and said, everything is gonna be okay. I've never forgotten them because of that. That started the love that I had for everything because it was just somebody else in the community outside of family that did something to make life much better. So that is why I bleed green and white. That's why I'm a Go Green, Go White fan to this day because I was taken there and uh, it's a lot of history. I have big red tiger pride. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I, I love the hikes, however, I could never say I'm just like Tiger Pride, Tiger Pride, because I'm not a, not a full-blown tiger. Um, that Indian is still within me. Um, but Tiger Pride is, is that community. Um, it's, it's helping you someone that if you see they need help, you help them without doing it for selfish reasons. Um, where if you see something going on in your community, you speak up. Um, you see there's a child that's doing something that may not be the best for them. You you step in and, and you know, you stop it like we had. And so Tiger Pride to me is, is more so the village. It's, it's a village. I played basketball for Muskegon High School. And so like the big rivalry game was with um, Day here at the Hikes. Um, we played against her and it was an amazing game. Um, the energy was always high whenever Muskegon and Muskegon Heights met on the on the court. So, okay, it impressed me, but when I was playing sports, it kind of irritated me because they had this whole chant, get your hat, your coat, and leave. And so that made us play even harder because we definitely didn't want them to say that irritating chant at the end, like their whole bleacher section. They could be talking and would literally stop just to say, get your hat, your coat, and leave. So, um, it was, you could tell that it was like a family unit. It was, it was a village. Tiger pride is a form of excellence. It is a form of perseverance. Straightforward, our community is predominantly black. Challenges historically, we've had to work twice as hard. And not to take away from anybody else, but to know that you have to work twice as hard to make your mark, that had to be put into our community. Work hard, be the best, don't take no shorts, make sure you have a seat at the table. You don't always have to fight, but you just put, you got to put your best foot forward. And when it's time to go forward and you have to fight, you fight knowing that you got the confidence of the community on your side. Being a Muskegon native, uh, if I was to talk to people from native of Muskegon Heights, I'd be an enemy because <laughs> I'm, I'm a Muskegon Big Red, uh, class of 1990. But within our community, growing up as a child, the two communities were intertwine, uh, families, uh, kids. If you wanted to connect two communities, all you need was use, all you need to use was Sanford Street. Uh, Muskegon Heights is um, the, the southern end of Sanford where my alma mater, Muskegon High School, was on the corner of Southern and Sanford. So it, it was nothing for me to get out of school because we got out of school before Muskegon Heights did. And, drive down and hang out in front of the school, wait for friends to come out or see what the latest scoop was and see which kids had what cars that they worked on them or uh, driving up and down the strip on Hovey Street, uh, 
catching to see what kind of action would happen or or things like that. Just growing up, it was it was fun. It was fun, and uh, Sanford Street would always be that connector between Muskegon and Muskegon Heights. With Sanford Street, houses were were pretty well kept. It wasn't a lot of blight. During my days, we still had families that took a lot of pride in their homes. Uh, and but you know, as a youth, you don't hear about all of the the issues and challenges that grown-ups would deal with. Even as a high school student, uh, I just didn't hear a whole lot about <clears throat> the, I would say, undercurrent of challenges that people would face. Because one, hey, I'm, I'm living carefree, I'm staying at home with my parents. I had a job, but it was, I didn't see it, you know, I just didn't see it. I knew that there were challenges because, you know, the nation, you got national news and things happening. We're in the Reag, post Reagan era. And I'm going to say this it was more so the latter as far as economics. Things started to change. Uh, directions of how companies would supply jobs, uh, big companies that used to be here, Seal Power, the Dana Corporation. S.D. Warren, uh, all of those were big, big places that had supplied jobs for the community overall for the common everyday person. You went to work at a factory. And it was nothing for me to hear about people having to drive out of town, going as far as Holland or Grand Haven to go work because companies started pulling out. And as it pulled out, things started getting worse. It's been well chronicled um, the transition that Muskegon Hikes took when we became uh, the first school district in the nation to become a K-12 charter academy. Um, it was rumblings that the district was going to close for multiple reasons and um, you know, the community was kind of in dis disarray. Um, People didn't know whether they should move their children to other schools, whether they should stay because we would continue to exist. And the um, Michigan High School Athletic Association made like an unprecedented move where student athletes and, uh, were able to transfer and go to other area schools and become immediately eligible to play in sports. And so if you can imagine, uh, Walmart saying anything you can get in this bag, uh, you can keep. It. I, I honestly felt like that because we had so many athletes, and I just felt like, you know, people were coming from everywhere and, and trying every angle and option to get kids to come. And, and parents, they they did what was in the best interest of their kids, and, and that was very well respected and appreciated because children don't make those choices. Parents do, and the parents have to go off the information they had at the time and uh, that's what they had to go by. And so with that being said, a lot of people did transfer and, and take other opportunities who were staff members, coaches, the, the gamut. Things turned in our favor and we became that charter academy and we sustained. But uh, the second question became, what's gonna happen with all these programs that's been such highly performing programs, basketball in particular, because we had runs for multiple years after that with two great coaches uh, that came right after Coach Gilbert, uh, who carried the torch great. And, um, and so it, it became, let's check the cupboard. Let's, let's see what's going on. And uh, it looked slim for a while, but the more we engaged, the more we start to find diamonds in the rough. And, uh, some of these kids weren't the um, alpha, high profile blue chippers um, or hadn't gotten the opportunity to show that they could be, I should say, but uh, the potential was there. And so, you know, we looked at it from a relative position where, hey, you know, we got enough of these guys with these skill sets, we can do some things. And uh, unfortunately for us at the time, we had the number one team in the state on our schedule, the second game of the year, which was uh, the Rockford Rams, in my opinion at that time, was the Duke 
of West Michigan high school basketball who was coming off of a, a state championship appearance. And um, I recall this so vividly going into the end of the game. I, I felt like we played defense for two straight minutes. And as a kid, um, I think he wound up playing at Hope College or Calvin, one of the two, but he was all state point guard, Chad Carlson. Uh, he hit a three-pointer to tie the game with like 10 seconds left in the ball game. Immediately I called timeout because I'm thinking I don't want us to take no early shots and give them a chance to win on the other end. And so I'll never forget Chad Carlson, who's a great guard also. He stepped up and slapped the floor and the other guys for Rockford slapped the floor like that gesture defensively like, okay, let's bring it. And so I'm like, man, this is a moment, you know. <laughs> And um, Jeff goes into his one-on-one -on -one moves and Carlson is planning pretty tight. I think Jeff makes a move and tries to step back to shoot his three. He took the shot. Carlson ran into him. They both fall and hit the ground. The ball roll in and roll out. Horn goes off. And then all of a sudden, in like the second part of that sound, I hear a whistle. And I see a white and black shirt run over and make a gesture and I'm losing it. And so I think when the officials got everybody calm again, you know, Jeff walked out to the floor because at this point there's no time left on the clock. So, you know, no other players were allotted on the floor. So he had to just be on his own and make the foul shot. Jeff hit the first one. And I remember it was kind of like one of those moments where it was kind of froze for me. When the ball went in, he just raised his hands like in victory and we kind of rushed the floor and was hugging them and celebrating them for the shot. And my brother, he was shaking him and Jeff was laughing and my brother was just shaking him. He said, man, how's it feel? And I'm watching. He said, man, I feel like Rocky. And I just remember that moment. And so, and so uh, one of the things I remember most vividly as we were leaving and walking off the floor, it's kind of like you're seeing faces and shaking hands and waving at people. But I saw people congratulating each other and hugging and high-fiving and that kind of thing. And it was a group of gentlemen walking out of the gym and they were giving each other a play. And I remember hearing them say, we still Muskegon Hikes. Like, regardless to whatever happened, regardless to whatever we lost, whatever we're going through, we tough enough to handle it. Our pride, we, we got enough of what we are to be successful anyway, regardless. And, and, and in that moment, I think that was one of the moments that I felt most proud, not just to be a coach and an, and an employee for the district, but just to be a part of our city, to be a part of everything relating to Mesquite Heights. That was one of my most proud moments as a citizen of our community. And I remember it just like it was yesterday. I think Tiger Pride is, is giving back, giving back to your community you know, um, you got to be there for your community. You have to be there for your community. You really do. Especially when you have, I have three kids. And they go here. One go here and um, one go to King School, the elementary school. And it was a couple times where I had to double think if I wanted to pull them out or not, you know? And I told myself, no, no, why? You know, well, they got accepted to different schools and everything, but no, no. We're rebuilding. When I was asked to be music teacher, band teacher, I knew of the rich tradition that this school has musically. So I, I know it's a great task ahead, it's challenging, but I'm up to it because of one, I love music and I love this community. I love everything that this school community has, the, the legacy. So the challenges are there, but by the grace of God, I know I can meet that challenge. And I know that there will be students that continue to persevere and take the challenge of learning to play an instrument or to be a part of the band.
And we were graced and blessed and privileged this summer to have a beginner's band camp, which was very successful. Um, so we have a seed that's in the ground and we're working to germinate it and, and make it grow. It won't, I don't wanna bring back because that day is gone. Um, but I want to build upon what was for something brand new to come. And that will be the Heights Tiger Marching Sound Machine because that's what it was. It was, a, it was like a well oiled machine producing a sound that not only caused you to get up and dance, but it lets you know that the tigers were coming. Just be on the lookout. Um, Muskegon Heights is about, it's about to be a shift in the atmosphere. My generation is kind of, you know, we're to the point where we're tired of waiting for somebody to come in and help. So we're gonna be that change that we wanna see. We're gonna, we're gonna get our kids that love and support and get that confidence back up to where they, they show that tiger pride all day, every day. Um, and they're gonna know that they have a support system that they can reach out to. The students now got to realize that there's a lot of people that care a lot about them and we worry about what they're doing. I wouldn't be here right now because I've been on this soapbox for years mm -hmm. trying to get the city of Mesquite and Heights to just look at what you got because right now I don't like the reputation that we got here in Mesquite and Heights and I don't know the kids don't like the reputation either that somebody said or knew the other day about this report, Mesquite going up, Mesquite and Heights going down. That's a lie. We're going. You go around the world right today, I bet you're going to find a Mesquite and Heights graduate doing something great. I guarantee you're going to have it. All over this world, we have Muskegon Heights doing great. What I'm saying is, you got to look at what you got right here in this building and be surprised. You got a brain. Please open your mind up and stop being a fool. 5% of the kids I take are bad. 95% are good. Let's talk about 95%. Let's brag on that 95%. The 5% you can't change. They're going to do what they want to anyway. I will continue to say to our students, there are many people in this community that you don't see on a daily basis that care about you and your success. There are people like the Brother Harris's that are still here that still care deeply about your success as a person. Don't give up and don't give in and don't quit. I am Taraya and we walk around the tiger because it's a respect thing and it's also a tradition. I am Idrik Torrance and we don't walk on the tiger because it's disrespectful. I am Jemaya. I walk around the tiger to show respect and it's a tradition. I am Norman Hancock and we don't walk on the tiger because it's a sign of respect and it's a tradition. <laughs>